so far we've only done the z-score portions of the decision matrix. This piece with the normal CDF where it ends in 0 and 1, and this piece over here where it ends in 0 and 1. But what about if it's not the z-curve necessarily, but we're working with any curve, any normal curve? Well, then we would use a different portion, right? We would use normal CDF, lower, upper, where it ends in mu and sigma, or inverse norm where it ends in mu and sigma. By the way, these other two pieces are the parts we learned in chapter 3. If you know a z-score, you can find the x-value and vice versa. That's not really chapter 7, that's just a review piece. So if you remember, we found the z-scores for the heights of people and that kind of thing. Alright, so let's practice with a generic x-curve, right? Not the standard normal curve, just any old normal curve. All right, we're gonna to have to shade appropriately and all that good stuff. So that portion of it's not changing. So we have this particular problem. The mean is 2200. So that would be this piece right here. The center is 2200. And the standard deviation is 200. And they want the percentile rank of 2100. All right, well, 200 below is right here, maybe a little bit closer. And that would be 2000 and they want the percentile rank of 2100. So 2100 is this line right here going down the middle between 2000 and 22, one, me, 2200. So that's 2100 right there. The percentile rank is the percentage that is below your value. So you want to shade over here, right? That was chapter three, right? Section 3.4, right? Percentile is percent below. little review right there. Okay, so I want the percentile, I want the percent below. I'm looking for this area right here because that will be the percentage below. So let's go back to the decision matrix. I know an X value, 2100 pounds. Oops, sorry, I gave it away. This is the giraffe problem. So 2100 pounds and I'm looking for percentile rank, which is the proportion or percent below. All right. So according to that decision matrix, I have to use normal CDF. And then it said lower comma upper comma mu comma sigma. So something comma something mu, the mu was 2200 and the sigma was 200. What's the lower edge of what we shaded? Remember, there's a note about this right in the decision matrix. If you shade the left tail, you use negative 1 E99 for that lower boundary. So that means I want to use negative 1 E99 right here, and that upper boundary is 2100, where I've stopped shading. All right, so on the calculator, this part is the same for all the calculators. So normal CDF, oh, negative 1 E99 is right there, otherwise you would type it, negative one second comma 99 but it was there so then arrow down 2100 and then here's the difference I have to put in the values that were given it's not 0 and 1 this is not a z-score so 2200 and 200 paste press enter and there you get it 0 0.3085 just like we saw because this is the giraffe problem so now you know where that number came from on StatCrunch, it's as simple as it always is. Remember that we're getting these values from Stat, Calculators, Normal, right there. So I'll say mean is 2200, standard deviation is 200, and I want to be less than or equal to 2100, enter. And there you have it, 0.3085. All right, so let's do another one. I want the area under the normal curve to the right of x equals 90. Ah, okay, so the mean was 75, which is right here. The standard deviation, the inflection points eight away from that, which would be uh, 83. 90 is actually almost two standard deviations away. It's kind of over here. So here's 90, and I want this area under that curve but to the right of 90. So I want that little bit right there. Right, what's that area? Okay, 
Again, I know an X value. I am looking for an area. So I'll use normal CDF, lower, upper, zero, or excuse me, mu and sigma. And you'll notice because I'm shading to the right, I'll be using one E99 for that upper boundary. This decision matrix really helps if you're using the calculator. If you're using StatCrunch, I don't know if you even need it because it's, I think, easier in StatCrunch. You don't have to worry about the 1E99 business for starters. All right, the standard deviation and the mean. So it goes mean and then standard deviation. Right? The mean was 75, the standard deviation was 8. So I'll show StatCrunch first this time. So I'm going to change it to a greater than. I'm going to change my mean to 75, my standard deviation to 8. And I'm going to make this greater than or equal to 90. Enter. And I get 0 0.0303, which is not entirely surprising. You can see we were not shading very much. Oh, 0304 if we round. Right? We were not shading much of that curve. So that would make sense. And I just realized I messed up just a little bit. They asked for the percentile rank here. That was my fault. Percentile rank, we always round. This is P31, right? The 31st percentile. That's what we should circle here. I forgot about that piece. All right, so 0304, oh, with the calculator. I got distracted by my own mistake. So normal CDF, let's see, 90, 1, second comma 99 then 75 and 8 paste and press enter and there you have it same as if you grabbed it with stack crunch well pull star there it all right so and we're only rounding that because it's a percentile percentiles get rounded so that's why we're doing that one all right, back I go. Sorry. So now we got those two done. Let's go back. 80 is in the middle. And I want between 67 and 87. Well, a standard deviation away, which is the inflection point, is about 92. Because 12 plus 80 is 92. And then 80 take away 12 would be 68. So we're just a little bit shy of that. So over here is 68. Over here is 87. And I want to be between those values. So I'm going to shade the region between them. Like that. Oh, that's terrible because it's not vertical. <laughs> Sorry about that. There we go. I shaded a little better. Okay, so then area between. This should actually be really simple in the calculator. Because that area will be normal CDF. Right, This is what we're looking for. The proportion is the area. Normal CDF. And all we want is lower, which is 68 or 67. Oh my goodness, 67. Comma upper, which is 87. And then the mean, which is 80. And the standard deviation, which is 12. All right, so let me grab the calculator. Now that I have the right numbers in there. Making mistakes all over the place on this one. All right, so normal CDF. 67, arrow down, 87, and then this one's 80 and 12. And paste and press enter, and we get 0 0.5808, which is fine. Um, proportions are often written as a percent, so you could write it 58.08% also. All right, now the hardest one. Oh, let me go grab Stat Crunch real quick. Because that was a between one. So if I click between and say 80 and 12, and this one's a little bit different because then I would type 67 here, 87 here, and press enter, and it will tell me that it's 0 .5808 and actually draw the picture for me. So that's a little bit different because you have to click the between piece. All right, now the last one requires a little bit more work, but it's actually similar to the one we just did. The center 
is at 180. The standard deviation is about 12 away, so that would be at 192, right, right there. Actually, I don't need to put the number in. The, the number is not really that important. I'm just kind of looking at it for my own benefit. Because if that's 192, 200 is past that. And that's what I really care about is this 200. Similarly, over on this side, take away 12 and I'd have about 168. And so therefore, that would be where this dot is. So 165 is kind of over here. Like that. And... I have two zones here. I really have this piece over here, which is on the left. And then I have this piece over here, which is on the right. And you can't be in both at the same time. That's why it's separated by an or, because you can add them. So you can find the probability of the green zone, probability of the blue zone, and then add them up. That's perfectly acceptable. But the easier way is to find this zone in the middle and take it away from one, right? So take one and subtract away the probability in the center. That would be normal CDF from 165 to 200, 180 and 12, right? Okay, so let me find that probability, so if I find it second distribution, normal CDF, so 165, 200, 180, and 12, and I paste that in, 180, that gets me that number, and I would take 1 minus that answer, second little negative sign, so 1 minus the last answer that I had, which is 0.1534. So this is one minus, that orange zone in the middle is 0 0.8466, if we round, which means that the final result would be 0.1534. Now if you use stat crunch, you'd still have to do the same thing for that last step, because stat crunch will only get you the middle number. So if I say this is 180 and 12, and then I say this is 165 and this is 200, enter. See there, it gives me that central area of 0.8466, and then you still have to take it away from 1 to be able to find the final results, just like we did here. So you can find this number with StatCrunch or with the calculator. Your choice.